Ooh, I'm gonna edge this. Are you having fun fishing? It's more fun when you fish together. Try multiplayer mode from the multiplayer menu on the TV screen. Right, I need to go over there. Oh, right, here we go. Fishing map. Uh, where am I going? Let's go to South Korea. Go fishing. I've got no idea where my mic is, it's somewhere here. Yeah, you're not far away. Okay, right. Uh, let's pick my rod up. Sun ooh, sunglasses on. That's what we're gonna use. Crankbait. Crankbait? Oh, what's that? Something over there. What's a crankbait? Welcome everybody to a very bizarre episode 10 of the Lure Fishing Podcast. I'm actually fishing. Well, sort of actually fishing. I'm virtually, virtual reality fishing. I've got a fish following my lure right now. I think it's a bass. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to say anymore. I've got a deep diving crankbait on. Oh, there it is. Right, let's, let's see if I can catch that one over there. You're casting at me? Yeah, I'm casting over there somewhere. There we go. All right. Get this crank back down to depth. There we go. Come on. Things have got that bad for Charlie. He's having to do a virtual reality fishing because you can't catch anything. All right, let's change the... Hold on. <laughs> Just see if I can catch something. Uh, like that. All right, what have we got on? We've got on a... <laughs> a spinner. All right, let's just try that. Oh, they like that. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Yes! <laughs> I put something. That is small. Oh, let's take some line. Here we go. What have we got? We've got... Uh, I've got a bluegill. I've got a, a 7.9 inch... 0.342 pound bluegill, which apparently is my personal best. So I'm, I'm going to release it. Do you get do you, do you get a photo? I, oh, do you know what? You can take a photo. I didn't even think about it. Uh, right, so I think that's... Let's turn this off. That's enough of that. Oh, um, that must have been great viewing. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure you all really enjoyed watching me just in... Just waving around in midair. Um, but it does segue quite nicely. I love a segue. I thought that's something you stood on. Well, it, it is. Moved you about. But it's also what I'm about to do and link one thing to the next. And it links into what we're going to talk about today, which is technology and fishing and where its place is. Well, that thing is incredible, isn't it? I, it was my birthday a little while ago. And my, my wonderful wife. Were you 50? <sighs> Not quite, no. I was 35. I've had a hard paper round. Um, In Scotland, do you have two birthdays a year? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, oh, I'm, all, I'm all out of breath. I haven't called you Scottish for a while. Yeah, it's a few episodes at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just going to rehydrate that. All the catching those fish are taking it out. That'd be an iron brew. Mm. Right. <laughs> um, yes, my wonderful wife bought this, this for my birthday. I never asked for anything for my birthday, and she happened to remember about six months ago. You said, said, I'm that crap at fishing. I'm that bad. <laughs> can you get me a yeah. virtual reality? Yeah, yeah, can I get a virtual my one, love. please? Yeah. But honestly, it is, isn't it? It's unreal. I mean, literally, it's unreal. But it's it's incredible the, the level of detail. Did you the... hear the audio footage that I put on the end of that Brian video? No. When you were talking to Robin about your oh right, yeah, yeah sexual my, 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 thoughts yeah, with your with wife and the fish yeah. you catch. Do yeah. I mean do you wear that in bed? I haven't yet, but <laughs> ne never say never. <laughs> what fishing you mean? Yeah, I okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> Weird crossover. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and it is, it's amazing because, it, I mean, for any of you, I'm going to try and stitch some little bit of video of me fishing into this, but if, if we're not quite there technologically, if anyone's used one of these, the level of detail is incredible. That is unreal that, you know, in my lifetime, that's, that was science fiction to now being a reality. How, how old were you when mobile phones came about? Oh, uh, in school, maybe... 11, 12, I guess. 
I went to New Zealand in 1998, mm. and they weren't about when I really, when I left. So when I came back, they were just available. just sort of yeah. Getting there. So that would yeah. have been 99, 2000. Yeah, so I'd have been like 12. Yeah, yeah so that's about right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then when I was at school, we didn't have computers. No, internet no. wasn't in, around. Was I, it? I remember that the first the first time I ever accessed the web. Uh, a friend of mine was the first person we knew who had it, and it was all dial up, and you know, wee, 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 all those weird noises. And uh, it cost a bloody fortune. <laughs> it, was, it was something like a pound a minute for every time there was a long news on it. And if anyone phoned in the house phone, it cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing in that, in my lifetime, which in comparatively is quite a small amount of time, it's got to where we are now. And it's similar with the technology in fishing, you know. Yeah. It isn't that long ago that. The, the, the ideas of all the um, the fish finding equipment we have available to us nowadays was just wasn't a reality. It was just never going to happen. And now it's real, and it's very accessible for more people than you would imagine. You know, from from everything from quite cheap stuff up to the really expensive. It's out there now for anyone to just go go and buy and use. And I know it's a bit of a de- 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 divisive subject, so I think we're going to try and talk about where at least our opinions fall on it. Yeah, I don't know where. I don't even know where I sit on this, really. Well, what was your first experience of like electronics in in fishers in I've fish still, finding equipment? I still got it. It was an old Lawrence that I, it's about, I don't know what it what model it was. So it was sort of upright looking, like yeah, the, yeah, another one's made. And yeah. it, it just gave a cone. Yeah. And at the time, we knew it was very limited. Yeah. And I just used it for finding depths. Yeah. So it would have been on. I would have used it. I'd have taken it on fen drains. I'd have taken it on resis, and I'd have taken it to Ireland when I used to go over there. Yeah. Because we're just, I just wanted to know mm-hmm. um, what the depth was. And in your head, you had this kind of, oh, I t- right, this would be quite interesting. I went. I remember I went to Ireland, it must have been early 90s, mm-hmm. and I stayed at a place near Loch Corrib, and it was a guy called Alan Broderick that used right. to do guided uh, pipe fishing, and used to get, Pike lines, PAC mag, and he had an advert in there. So, me and my mate Chinny went. He was a school friend. Uh, he wasn't very good fisherman, but we had a nice trip away to Ireland. It was good yeah. fun. And we stayed at Allen's, and Alan Broderick was well into his tech. Mm-hmm. Now his well, he was so much more advanced of an angler than I was then. And what we we used to hire one of his boats, go out onto uh, Corrib, and it was littered with rocks, mm-hmm. and even the back water part of Corrib was boat channels that had been blasted out with dynamite and whatever. And, and he was really animated, telling me this tale of how it, this new tech was coming in, so he was going to map all these yeah, routes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it would enable him to lure fish in between the channels and, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. and subtly fish the whole area a lot better, because at the time they were just finishing the bays. Right. Because one, the, it wasn't very safe to go over on parts of the big lock. Uh-huh. Because it was so you get these massive rocks just appearing out of the, the water. It was amazing. And also trying to find out where the fish would lay up and yeah, hold yeah. up and so forth and so on. So that, that, I, it's only when you said that, I, yeah, because we had just had this base. It's so nice. So he was talking about all this tech that they'd invented. And mm-hmm. I think he he was talking about definitely talking about mapping. And I think then he was mentioning things like side imaging that wasn't actually available, but no. was on the... It had been discussed at least. Excuse the pun, the radar yeah. of these tech companies. Yeah. So that was that must have been mid nineties, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we just had the down image, and then then things like, what was the, the thing that used to had a mount that you plugged into the on the boat? It was like a something buddy, fishing buddy, had a little screen. Oh, they, I know what you mean. Yeah, they I came available. But yeah. again, the problem it, and the problem with all these basic sonar setups is. You could have fish symbols on them, yeah, which were so inaccurate. Yeah. So if it picked up any obstruction in the water, yeah, ping fish, fish, and yeah. then it gave you the size of the fish. Yeah. And but again, you, you knew that it was limited, so we had those. And then, um, when did I first? So our sonar got better and better. Obviously, we got hummingbird allowance, mm-hmm. Garmin with the down image with the, the the sonar, and the down imaging came in. But it was never much use to me mm-hmm. because I didn't. It's I, I didn't want to know what was under the boat because I'm fishing quite shallow water. I wanted mm-hmm. to be able to look in front, yeah. behind, to the side. Yeah. And it was only when I first heard about side imaging, I got back into the tech of it because mm-hmm. you thought, hold on a minute, this is more advantageous. Yeah. And uh, 
when I first sort of come across it, you thought, oh, I could turn this thing and fend drains. I was thinking, I had it far in front, I could see where the fish are in the reed beds and mm -hmm. then it was fish baits, like live baits, dead baits and do whatever. But it's only when I started musky fishing that I was going to North America. That's when I got very friendly with a guy called Matt Seifert, who is regarded as one of the best guys in North America for muskies on tech. Mm -hmm. And he... He has got it sorted, the side imaging, and he right. has had it sorted for years, even with the basic um, first-gen setup. Mm -hmm. When I was out there, he'd be showing me all sorts of little things that you could do and tricks and blah, blah, blah. And, and you can you go, wow, this it was an eye-opener, just from having that. And that must have been 2000... That Wasn't that long ago? Six, seven years ago? Yeah. But things have advanced so quickly. It's sort of moved at like a lightning rate. I mean... I think my so I, I, my first introduction to electronics would have been sea fishing. Yes. Um, and but that would have been mainly just charts to find features and to make sure they was anchoring in the right place. Really, that was all it was. It was just to get the right depths and make if they. And that's probably where it had its initial starting yeah. point, wasn't it? Yeah. Sea fishing. But that was I was always with charter boats, so yeah. I would as an interested person and a curious person, I would watch over the shoulder of the skipper and try and understand where he was positioning and why he was positioning there and the readouts he was getting. But I didn't really understand it because I wasn't using it myself. Um, yes. I just enjoyed looking. Um, I think the first real thing for me was a deeper. You know, the first thing I owned yeah. was a deeper. So I had the deeper, the the, the, the deeper, the first one, the one the first one I released, I had it pretty much on release because I thought I can really see advanced, because a lot of my fishing was, boat, was bank fishing. Um, I could see advantages for this to, for a few things. A, finding depths. B, finding bait fish in the winter. Um, and, you know, other things. Never really saw the benefit of it being a fish finder as such for, for the fish I was targeting. And I never really used it in that way. But I used that, and it also, obviously that first one had its issues with connectivity and range and things like that. And I went along and I worked all the way up to where I had the chirp, which was the, the at the time it was the most... Uh, advanced uh, advanced one they had and for those who don't know we're back at Hanningfield again this week this is where <laughs> and the ta yeah the tables haven't moved. yet um <laughs> this is where I really got into it yeah like the the, yeah, yeah. So the... uh, this is where I really got into it and I'd fished Hanningfield for most of my life on and off as in from a child fishing with my granddad over in a fly with, with, with bits and pieces and I'd always knew there was big perch in it. It was always, you know, every year you'd see a few big ones caught, mainly by accident, um, by guys spinning and, you know, with little spinners and things for trout or, you know, some occasion when the fly anglers would catch big perch. Um, but no one really targeted them with any sort of success. And before that point, I'd always been blind. I'd always, like, I know roughly, I know by dropping the anchor, roughly what sort of depth we're in, yeah. but I don't really know of any features around here. I don't, yeah, that's about it. And I came out with a chirp that day, and purely by luck, we just rolled over a shoulder bait. And I was like, oh, I found bait fish. Bang. Caught fish. We had half an hour till the boats were meant to be in that day. I think between me and my buddy, we had seven or nine perch, and all of them were over three pounds, you know? And that was literally, we landed on them. Didn't have time to work out what they was eating. They were just eating everything we threw at them at that point. And then we had to come back. And then it's like, right, well, that, that's easy. We know that now. A week to the day later, we came back. We did it again. Went out roughly where we, we'd left them, took the deeper, found the shoulder bait, bang, straight back into the fish. And that was the fishing for that season. For the end of that season, we had probably half a dozen trips like that where you knew where they, roughly the area. Yeah. Dialed it down with the... Let's be honest, in the grand scheme of things, deep, deeper, even with the chirp, and is quite a basic sonar compared to what some people use. That was all we needed. We just needed to be in the right-ish vicinity, which we wouldn't have been in a million years without any sort of electronics because we would never have known that bait was there. And it caught us a fish. Yeah. And, that, and then since then, obviously, I've graduated on to other things. And um, now you know, I'm trying to learn a bit of the live scoping thing from you. And uh, I, you know, I'm quite into like the side imaging, which I'm still learning. Um, but it's, I don't do loads and loads of reservoir boat fishing. So it's never going to be as important to me as perhaps it is to something, someone like you, but I, my natural curious mind wants to learn it. You know, that's yeah. It's, 
it's amazing because I've got I just as a, a deeper, I've got one that I put on the back of my bait boat yep. when I go carp fishing. Yeah. Because I'm I don't I'm not a carp angler at all. But mm-hmm. I go once a year on for a holiday mm-hmm. and I'm lazy, I just bait boat because I know the rigs are then set perfectly. Yep. That's the only reason. Yeah. I just and then we fish at range. But I liked I I bought this deeper and of course it lost range with my phone. Yeah. It only went about thirty meters and feet. I thought, mm-hmm. oh that didn't work. But mm-hmm. um I've never really used them, but obviously I've got this one, but I don't tend to use it. But I think anything that you know is accurate, accurate. <clears throat> if you use it in a way which is going to suit your fishing, mm-hmm. why not? But I suppose now the debate's raging about, well, I'm not going to go into the the, the economics of it because uh, we had that conversation. We've had that conversation yeah, in the past, I, yeah. Yeah, and I just think if you... I'm not going back down that road, but no. yeah. But actually, I don't know. I've got... I don't know where I lie with this because... Um, because I think it's fair, it's fair, I think it's quite fair to say, in some respects, you're quite a traditionalist, but in others, you like you like advancement. What I yes, well, my view is, if I'm going fishing, I'm going to learn something. Uh huh. The fish is a bit of a byproduct. Yep. I like to come away having improved my knowledge base. Yeah. I think that's really important. So, um, I've probably got probably the one of the best tech setups there is around yeah. because I just thought if I'm going out and doing it properly and I've built yeah. this up over, I had a, the, G, the Gen 1 Hummingbird and it was a very cluttered screen but having used that and learnt, that was my learning tool on a 10-inch mm-hmm. screen. Now that I've upgraded, it's been like, wow, I can mm-hmm. see. And um, recently I've purchased a live scope as well. Now, that was an eye-opener. It, I, it hasn't helped me catch any more fish as in there they are mm-hmm. because the side imaging would show me where they are yeah what the live scope enabled me to do was learn yeah about my lure setups my yeah. lure presentations um even something down to how one lure the same model but a different lure would be different yeah i think it that's crazy. I never realised. You wouldn't think of no, these things. No, you can't assume they're all built the same. Yeah. How different diameter braids affected <clears throat> retrieves and depths that lures would, lures would work. Yep. Water temperature, how fish respond at different temperatures. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> how some predators respond to certain baits depending on pressure. Um, the list is endless. So for me, it's been, I use it sometimes to dial in exactly where a fish might be but you can like i said the side imaging i've got a 360 as well it, you, you can use all these things together that help but the thing that has really i've managed to, it's been like my eyes underwater yeah so best example is i've been out sometimes and people are gonna think i'm crazy and i've actually not targeted catching a fish mm-hmm. what i've done i've gone to certain feature structure depths and i've chucked different lures in the cone yeah of the Life scope, yeah, just so I can see what happens. Or I've gone to find bream shoals mm-hmm. <laughs> and seen what happens if I get the boat near them and just trying to work out what's going on with yeah. um, different species, the water. Because you've got, I think you need to get in tune with what's happening with that ecosystem, yeah. So I think I have a different mindset to most people. Yeah. I don't go to catch a fish, yeah, I go with a kind of um. An idea in mind, obviously the fish is, and what happens is, the harder you try, the the more you learn, and mm-hmm. sometimes the luckier you get. I think, I think I said before, Gary Player had a great saying, the harder we try, the luckier we get. And it's not a coincidence that I'm catching some really nice sized fish, not because I'm going out to target them, but because I feel that my, you can only get to a certain level of knowledge when you're blind. Mm-hmm. If you open your mind up to all sorts of prospects, and yeah, part of, of that is the tech. Yeah, yeah. You've got all this, you get flooded with new information yeah. and it's it's mind-blowing. You kind of go, I never knew that. Yeah. And like you said, you learn from it. So you know you, that you can apply that knowledge elsewhere. It's so like you say, if you know how uh, a particular crankbait with, with a combination of certain braid and you know leader diameter and things like that, if, how they interact with each other on one given place whilst you're watching with technology, that information is now in your brain. So anywhere you, else you go, you know that that's how that's set up. Probably you don't need the technology to tell you again because you've learned that now. You know that. Exactly right. When I've had people in the boat with me, it's been a windy day, I, 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 I will say to them, what, your, diameter bra- your braid's quite thick, isn't it? And they'll go, to look, and they go, how do you know that? I go, look at how it's bowing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, and it's the only reason I know this yep. is because 
you can see things and work out mm -hmm. what's what's good and what's bad. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing people's responses. They go, oh my God, I never thought of that. Yeah. And, and you wouldn't have done without. Well, it goes back to, so this is a relatively controversial thing, but I almost think that it's like another layer of watercraft. It is. Because yeah. like, you know, how, watercraft to me, if you used to try and define it, it's a, it's a word that gets banded around a lot and it doesn't necessarily mean what it's meant to mean sometimes. In my mind, I think it's to view something that's happening on the water and, and interpret that from an angler's point of view. So, for example, I see a tr like for we say we're here at Hannyford. I see a trout rise, roll, whatever you want to say. There's different ways to interpret what that fish is doing. Is it feeding? Is it just shaking off a parasite? Is it? Just How do you know it's a trout? Exactly, how do you know it's a trout? So all these things are, are, are things are, you you learn over time on the water, you know. Because nobody knows straight away. The first time I see that trout do that uh, action, they know, no one goes, all oh, right, that fish is definitely feeding. Unless they literally see it sip and fly off the surface. Yeah. So then you fish for that fish. And you see how that fish interacts with what you're doing. And if it, you, you initiate a feeding response, it's likely that fish was feeding. And if that happens over time, you get a pattern and you build it up and you build up this little library of knowledge in your head and you go, oh, I remember that time that that fish done that like that it moved like that and rolled like that and that's how i caught it and then you could do the same thing with electronics you can go right i've just watched how those fish interact with my lure and they didn't really like it like that they preferred it this way or yes. at that depth or at this speed and the next time you can go ah i've seen these fish do this yeah. before yeah and, it, and it, it's so similar you know it, it, it's the same it's watercraft it's however controversial people might think that is it's watercraft you're learning how the fish are interacting with what you're doing on the water, and that's and that's watercraft. But you're spot on. I'll tell you something else. Last year, I had a situation for a, f a week or two where I didn't use the tech. I just turned mm -hmm. it off mm -hmm. because people weren't noticing what was happening around them. Yep. They were motoring around with their head in the screens, yep. and if I'd have done the same, I would have missed what was going on. Yep. So I think tech's great, but you can't also ignore um, basic good angling skill as well yeah, yeah yeah so you have to watch what's going on and i, I, I think i told i've had a, a re really big fish recently and the only reason i caught it was back to that experience i had last year when i turned mm -hmm. the tech off mm -hmm. and just absorbed what i could see happening yeah. and it just enabled me to again you think oh okay it was to do with light values wind strength and so forth and so on i just picked up what was going on mm -hmm. and uh yeah it, it's tech's great but if you get totally in absorbed by it you're then blocking off yeah, you're so shutting doors else. to something else. Yeah, yeah. so you got, it's finding that balance, isn't yeah. it? And, and angling is all about balance, if, yeah. in my mind, in lots of different ways. And that balance between, between tech and using what God's, God's given you, your eyes, your ears, and feel, and everything else, you need to find that balance. And they're the, for, in my mind, they're the anglers that really get it right, that work out that balance between the two and know when, when to be eyes down and looking at the screen and analysing what they're seeing and when to go, right, head up, what's going on around me? Who's doing what? What's doing? What's happening? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's a. Uh, <coughs> I think that if you want to be a really good angler or a really good sports mm -hmm. person, you have to embrace everything yeah. and work out how much of each element you want to incorporate within your yeah. discipline. And I think a lot of people assume that just by owning the tech means you catch <laughs> yeah, the fish. I know. <laughs> I've seen it so many times where people go, right, I've spent however many thousands of pounds and all this stuff. I will catch those fish that. that Mr. ABC down here has been catching because he's got the same tech as me. Yeah. It's not as simple as that. No. It's, and you, and you, you, you had, I have this argument with people all the time that there's a, a real skill to using it. Real oh, skill. A, a conversation I've had recently with people have been eye opening because they, you see, they see you've got it. They think uh, you explain. I think no, I, I use it for this, 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 and this. Yeah, but and I go, well, you wouldn't know mm. because you don't. One, you don't have it, and two, mm. you've not let me explain to you. Yeah. Um, I don't. A really in-depth conversation with a very famous fly angler, and uh, because he's he's very good, mm -hmm. within within two minutes of us talking, he changed his whole perception of what. Yeah. He went, I've got it. Yeah, I see what you're doing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, his perception beforehand was. I went, no, nah, it's. Da -da 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 -da. And he go, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. it's that's a strange one actually because the world of, pi of fly fishing. Hasn't really embraced tech in the same way lure fishing has, like, and, and a lot of the competitions it's banned. You can't use any type. But of I wouldn't. I tell you what, I wouldn't. Use, I don't. Wouldn't use the tech for trout fishing. No, because trout have to move <coughs> really quick, yeah. basically to survive. Yeah, and 
the whole thing about fly fishing on a boat with the drogue is the whole sport's been developed that you just cover areas of water. Yeah. So you don't really need... No. You don't... In fact... But even finding depths and things, you know, people might... It, it doesn't really happen. I've seen... You do see guys with it at the front. Yeah, they, they like using those old fishing buddies. Right, yeah. yeah. You, you don't see... It's, of all the fly anglers I see here, I don't see many. You, mm. There's a couple. There's a couple that do. But it's not really been drawn in like it has been in lure fishing. Trout are really interesting on the technology. Yeah. It's very difficult to see. Yeah, you see a streak very often. <laughs> yeah. Gone. Gone, yeah. <laughs> and you kind yeah. of... So it, it, it's... It definitely helps you find areas, particularly early season, where they've been stopped. Yeah. And to me, that would just be like yeah. fish soup. What's the point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it would definitely help with that. But I think with most trout fishing, it wouldn't really help you at all. No. But um, mapping. Mapping's really important. Mapping's very important because, yeah. that, that, you know, in years gone by, it's all up here. But if you can refer to it, the amount of times I've sat at home and looked at maps and trying to sort of plan my attack on the next time I'm going fishing and going, oh, look, I was here today. That's a similar sort of area to over here. The maps you buy are wrong. Yes, of course. They're not yeah. even close no, to being accurate. Because no. I was mapping out. So two years ago, <coughs> again, because I, could, I just didn't, I couldn't be bothered to set up the boat. So I was going yeah. out on big waters with um, out any tech. Yeah. Because I knew these fish were running along features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all I would do is, like you would on the fen drains, I'd sit, anchor up, 45 minutes, move 50 yards, mm-hmm. move 50 yards. Mm-hmm. I, I knew I didn't set the fish. and uh, But I'd used the tech to map the water first. Yeah. And I knew, I'd worked out what was going on because it was pretty straightforward after a few trips that these fish were running along a certain feature. Yeah. And it was quite funny. I didn't even take the bat. I didn't take, I didn't take anything. And I had two or three guys. They just couldn't understand. Well, they actually looked down at me. They didn't really? look here because it's because I'm using an anchor. <laughs> it's like, well, and also... If you think about it, we're going to soon. Soon, we're going to get to the situation where fish are going to hear the whirring and clicking mm-hmm. of all this mm-hmm. tech. And I think going back to the old days of subtly dropping an anchor down and just sitting there quietly. Yeah, I mean, I think, think we possibly. I can't remember if it was on a podcast, but we've had similar conversations in the past. And it, it, within the world of sea fishing, um, anchor whistle is a big thing. So, it, 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 from uptide, it, my uptide in sort of experience you have positions on the boat and the, what the, the prime position is the one nearest the front of the boat because you can cast up tide and ahead of that anchor. Yeah. So you don't hit, so the ones at the back, they're, getting, they're in the, the, the yeah. channel of that anchor yeah. whistle. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think that that's going to, the more and more these fish get pressured with these sort of things, they're going to get switched on to, they'll, they'll, they'll connect the dots. Got a lovely tale. Last time I was in America, that must have been four years ago. Mm-hmm. Lake Vermilion is, do you remember the old Lassie films? Yeah, yeah. Right, when the scenery was, like, beautiful with yeah. all these pine trees Rolling and, hills and these and, yeah. big lakes with massive... Lake Vermilion in, in North Minnesota is, like, the, one of the most beautiful places you can mm-hmm. ever see. It's this massive lake, but it's got loads of arms and yeah, parts yeah. to it. And so it, it, at no one point does it look too wide. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. You can always see land. And... Um, I was taken to this lake by Matt, and it was just... I never caught a muskie there. It was just beautiful. But the muskie population was nosediving because it had been one of the most popular muskie venues in the 80s, mm-hmm. early 90s. Mm-hmm. Perhaps even to... to and it, because it, it was stopped, uh, the DNR over there do a fantastic stocking programme. Most of the natural muskies uh, don't exist anymore, so they survive through this stocking programme. Yeah. So anyway, we're on Vermilion, and it had this reputation, so there were three or four full-time guides in the summer months who just yep. worked it. And uh, the guides would always share information and go to their spots and have their honey holes or whatever. And the tech had got so much into their brains mm-hmm. about the fish being scared of it that Luke Ronenstad, who's a really famous guide over there, started guiding with no electronics and not using his bow mount. Really? And it started to fright because he, he was only catching at night. Right. So... It, the f- and bugger me, the first time he did it, he caught, <laughs> right? So it then, com- there were guides, but it, 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 it fried their, for their brains. Yeah. They, they, they then had to go, have we got to <coughs> get rid of everything? Yeah. And just fish blind because the fish are, but it could have been a coincidence. Yeah, of course. So yeah. it can. If you Play think, with you. Yeah. 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 But they were convinced that the trolling motor was in and the pinging of the sonar. Yeah. These big musky that had been, caught a few times because let's face it there weren't many in the lake at mm-hmm. that point were picking up these sounds and scooting off and yeah so who knows where it's going to go i tell you what though as as a working ranger or a reservoir i wish everyone had a bow mount 
because it saves me cleaning the anchors at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the, the anchors are covered in mud and things like that, which we don't get with a bow mount, obviously. So. That, that is one of the best bits of kit you can oh, have. Absolutely. Precision. Yeah. And moving the boat very slowly across upwind or whatever. They're, they're, they're fantastic bits of kit. Yeah. Just something else to set up and carry. And this is a battery. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. We're in the UK where we're lacking of slipways and the likes and things like that. Most of your fishing are on higher boats. Yeah. So you have to drag it all on, drag it all off at the end of each day. Whereas most other European, big, uh, big European countries in the States and places like that, everyone's got a boat. And that's the other thing. Your kit breaks. Oh. The other day, in the back of my hunting, I got a universal clip. Uh huh. It's broken one of the plastic recesses. Yep. So it's like something so simple. How the yeah. hell do I get that fixed? Yeah. Because it's not made to be transportable. No. Leads um, snap mm-hmm. at the the join into the plug, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, if it can go wrong, it, it will. I haven't quite worked out how I want my setup yet. I haven't got it portable enough. You know, I've sort of like bodged it together. And it works, and it's, it's doable, but it's not comfortable, no. and it's not easy to put away. Nothing's and, perfect. Uh, no, it's, it's painful. And you spend all that money on stuff, and you just think, and yeah, you're right, it's, it's made to sit permanently on a bass boat. Yeah. 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 And you look at all these guys, wherever, all over the Scandinavia and America, and you go, yeah. look at all we've got here. Yeah. It's a bit, we are <coughs> lacking a lot in pu- public, well, waterways and slipways. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that will go the other way. You know, more people... What is supply and demand? You'd hope that eventually more and more people want to do it. I don't think it will, mate. Do you not? No, I think um, the wa- we haven't got enough waters. Mm. I've got frog in my throat. <coughs> and I think the waters that we have got can command a nice price for renting out boats. Yeah. We are health and safety mad in this country. Yeah, it's crazy. And yeah. people would want to charge for the slipways. Yeah. Whereas you go to the States, you, you, there's no charge. No. No. And ev- every lake has slipways. Yeah. And you can't, well, with the vast majority, and you look at it and go, oh. Mm. And you go, I say to my mates, what's in this lake? They go, we have no idea. Yeah. We don't even know anyone that's fished it. And you kind of go, in Minnesota, there are 11,000 lakes. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? And most of them are huge. Yeah. So it is, it is a different, it's a completely different scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there we go. But yeah, it's tech, I think. I think some, some people have got the wrong end of the stick Definitely. Some yeah. people think as soon as they've got it, they're going to catch more fish. They're going to catch less fish because they've got yeah. to spend years learning how to use it. Yeah. So they're going to spend so long nose deep in the tech, they're not even going to be learning about what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And no, I make you right. It's it's a lot of it. Like I've, I've used my uh, my live scope. I played with it a little bit out here, but just playing with it really, I found myself sitting for like. 20 minutes watching the trout in the cages, <laughs> just just watching them, <laughs> yeah. just watching what they do, because I find it so interesting. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think this, the, the, it is what you want from it. You get from it what you, whatever you want yeah. from it. It's, it's, yeah. For some people, it's something else, you know. But you have to... Master is too strong a word. You have mm-hmm. to be able to use it. Because also, the other thing is, you just can't have it on standard settings, all these yeah. things. I came out here, I think I remember the first time I came out here, my yeah. 360 wasn't working, and yeah. I thought... It's broken. Yeah. No, it was to do with the different water and bottom composition mm-hmm. of Hanningfield compared to other places. It wasn't getting the ping back. It was yeah. sucking. The, it, I had to bump up lots of things and turn down things. And suddenly I went, oh, I've never come across mm. that before. And it yeah. was a bit of a, when that happens, it's a bit mind-blowing. Yeah. And some of these touch screens as well, you can brush against part of the screen and turn something off. Yeah. And it's only when that happens a few times, you know what you've done. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, using yeah. a computer software package. Yeah. You have to physically get out there in the elements and try all these things. Because sat at home going through it is... Ugh. No. It doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. work. No, you've yeah. got to get out there and do yeah. it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know where we're going with this. I, I can't... Can you imagine? Well, that's... Hold on, let's hold on. <laughs> Before we get too far into this, that's, we've got something else we need to resolve in this episode. And that's... We need to announce the winners of our competition. Yeah, because I was going to go on to... Can we're going to get there in a minute. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get there. But, yeah, so... For those of you who've been watching the previous episodes, back in way back in episode six, which was like a month ago, we um, announced the competition. And what you had to do was screenshot something you liked from one of the podcasts, 
post your Instagram story and tag our Instagram, which is the Lure Fishing Podcast. Can I just say? What? That is amazing. You've remembered all this. Every single episode. Yeah. You've done really well. That's, well. that's the only thing I've had to remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing that I've been relied on. Every time you've been saying it, I've yeah. been going, how has he remembered this? Yeah, I, I don't got... know. It's right. been drilled into my brain now. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, and what we said, we had four packages of lures that we was going to give away to four of you guys uh, as a thank you for watching and supporting what we're doing um, and very kindly Diowa gave us some ProRex lures yeah. and even more kindly as a, as a single uh, individual running this business Tom Moyer from FFS Lures yeah. donated some bits as well so firstly massive thank you to both Diowa and to Tom um, we'll link their, their stuff in the description because they need support as well you know we, we love people getting involved and we want to push share the love I think is what the, the best term is yep um so yeah, four also, winners. Go on. We need to, Tom Hunt promise some Westin. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll have some Westin bits added to that we package. We haven't got those yet. So I'll me- Tom. one of us will message him. Sure he'll get those off to us. Oh yeah, cool. right. well remembered. So what we did, um, extracted mm-hmm. um, names of people who had followed Charlie's instructions, and we got the computer whirring and did a randomization type thing. Mm-hmm. We have four winners. We have four winners. Do you want to go? I can see. I can see number one and three. So I do one and three, you do two and four? No, go for it. Right. So number one is Mr. Dave Mower. And now, Dave, I know I speak to Dave fairly regularly. So if you're watching this, Dave, drop us a message, it, preferably through the Lure Fishing Podcast Instagram so we can keep it all in one place. We'll get your address and get those out to you. So yeah, well don't, done, Dave. Send, um, don't put your address on the uh, comment. Put it... No. <coughs> send it to us privately. Yeah. But if you can send it, rather than send it to me personally, because me and Dave chat, chat a little bit, I'll forget and it'll get lost. Yeah. So send it to the Lure Fishing Podcast. Uh, number two is Brian Power. Well done, Brian. So, Brian, if you do the same as send us a message with your address, we'll send you a care... I'm, I'm going to sound package. like you, a care package. Care package, like yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And please. number three is another Brian, Mr. Brian Holland. Well done, Brian. Again, same thing, same spiel. Send us a message, we'll get them out to you. Is it my handwriting that you can't read? No, it's the angle of the lighting on the paper. Because I... My handwriting's awful. I should be a doctor. It's that bad. <laughs> and the fourth name we picked out. Now, I'm not sure. That they're not going to get one each. They're going to have to share this. Yeah. This is, uh, it was on Predsy, Predsy UK. underscore UK. And I think it's guys, Kevin and Sa- uh, Sean. So obviously you only get one package, I'm afraid, guys. <laughs> but if you, again, send us a message with your address, we will get those off at some point. Now, just bear in mind... They might be a bit delayed. Yeah, I just remember that because I'm abs- I'm away for a week. Yes. So I'm not sure how we're going to do this. But we'll we'll, we'll sort- work it out. Yeah. You, you'll get them eventually. It might take a little bit longer than we perhaps would have hoped, but we're both very busy individuals. Yeah, bear with, but we'll get them out to you. And uh, um, yeah, basically, I'm going to France. I'm not going to post them from France because yeah. by the time I've gone, you will have sent me your addresses. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, we'll right. That. So from there... Should we look at Mauler's? Now, in episode nine, I, I was a bit rude. I had to cut he you short. Me, called me back. He pulled me back. He, he <laughs> pulled me back from the precipice. I did. Yeah. Because time was pressing. But yeah. Wayne Fletcher, yeah. who has got a track record for this, hasn't he? He has. So Wayne is quite well known um, within the lure fishing scene in the UK, not only for his fishing, but for his lure making. He hand pours his own soft plastics. And they've got a bit of a name for himself, and he's getting asked from all the time. And he's never got he's like us. He's a busy man. He's never got enough time to do it. But he dragged all his making equipment out of wherever he keeps it, and he's made us some bits, especially for us. Now Wayne did tell me all the names of all these lures, and I've absolutely <laughs> forgotten every single last you one. You remember the Instagram? Yeah. Player, but um, so I know. What, I know. I'm sure. Are we allowed to keep these and use them? Yeah, they're ours. Yeah. They're oh, out. Yeah. Oh, these are ours. Thank yeah. you, Wayne. That's perfect. There's a few different shapes uh, and sizes here. So we'll have, a, we'll have a little note. I, I've seen most of these before because Wayne has given me some stuff in the past. So, but for these, for you, I think most of these will be brand new. Um, but again, apologies, Wayne. I don't know what they're called. But I'll give these. I like the colours. These are great. I've, so I've used these a lot, and I see if you pick out something on these that's quite interesting. That yeah, I've already seen these tails are yeah. different, customizable tails. I think yeah, it's brilliant. Because he's left the V in it that you can cut them. Yeah. So you can cut out the V if you want to stay traditional with the older... Because uh, basically these are like what people would use for vertical jigging mm-hmm. and they cut the V in them. I would actually use them differently. I think these would be great retrieved. Yes. And I'll tell you why. 
because they'd be different. Yep. Wayne Wayne's told me that in the past how he t- likes to fish them. Yeah. Yeah, lots of cast. Yeah, and I'd start off with the tail staying the same yeah. and then uh, go from there. But I like the way he's got a recess in here so you can use a... Do you see the thing I like, about, I like about Wayne's lures and um, you'll see the more we look at them. You can tell they've been made by an angler because he's thought about yeah. like trouble shot them already. He's thought about what he would want from a lure and already put it in place. And Wayne's Wayne's very good at analysing his angling. He's quite annoying to fish with because he's he's so dialed in to his angling all day that there's no social fishing with Wayne. He's so into his fishing, he's almost impossible to have a conversation with when you're fishing. We ought to take these bass fishing. Isn't it? Well, yeah, so Wayne has caught a lot of fish on these. Like, yeah, a lot of bass on these. But yeah, I mean these would be great perch, Zander. Uh, yeah, bass, whatever you want to fish for. I'll, really. I'll, when I first when he showed me straight away, I was actually thinking of Zander straight away because yeah. what you could do is bottom bounce this and yeah. you could, and with the paddle tail. Yeah. It's going to give a completely different, yep. not paddle tail, with a it's like a beaver tail, isn't it? Beaver tail. It's yeah. going to give a completely different. It's going to have a very subtle. Lack, it's going to lack movement, yep. which sometimes bizarrely works better than. Pass me the. Oh look, it's double. Oh, look, Charlie. Yeah, pass like me that. the ribbed one, the bigger ones. Please. I do like those. Mm. Talking to Tom Moyer recently, he's bringing out. I'm. G- yes, I'm going to say it. I'm, <laughs> he's bringing out a new frog. Oh, really? And you should see what he's done with the design with that when you talk about an angler thinking about things. Uh-huh. I'm not going to give anything away. Right. But particularly if you're on the surface. Really, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you, because uh, it's not it's not my story to tell. Oh, okay, cool. Because um, I'm sure he's got plans for it. But uh, when he Watch shows space. It, when he sh- I thought, how did he think of that? Yeah, yeah. It's really, really clever. That's, That's yeah. cool. I like things like that. And, um, yeah, he's got... Yeah, I'll, it's j- just keep, so those of you who like a bit of VFS surface fishing. Yeah, yeah, these new frogs. Well, they'd be good for other stuff as well, but he's really brought. How about that for a colour? I really like that. It's an interesting one that, and all the flaking, that sort of semi-translucent y sort of. Has he made his own mould? Yes, he goes everything from scratch. Yep. Because that's a. Uh, that's quite a traditional. Yeah. Isn't it sort yeah. of, um, but it's got a narrower body, yeah, so it, it won't roll as much. That's it. Yeah, he, he plays with a lot of things himself. I think in here there is a, the same thing but smaller. You see, I'm thinking if you had that on a stand-up jig head, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and you could just let it, yeah, that with that tail, particularly in the smaller sizes, could be yep. really, really good. Yeah. Well. You could just, but it's, it, I look at these and I think, Christ, the the level of detail in these hand pores are incredible, aren't they? When you actually look at it and look at the layers, especially in that one, you get those, that separation from that sort. Well, I'm of looking. It's not. Even, it's not even in a straight line, as in, I can't work out how, the angle of his mould must be. Well, that's it. That's what I thought because it's it's not like it's not a straight line. Yeah, strange, isn't it? I've, yeah. I've, I've, I'm, I've never done it, so I couldn't and tell you. And it's not an accident because it's the same both sides. Yeah, yeah. So that's obviously got you should probably use a bit more slightly more dense plastic at the bottom half of the bay. Yeah. So it's got that natural keel. But it's getting that getting that uh timing right as well when you're pouring to get the separation but not them be separate. Yeah. It's it's, it's very interesting. I I'd, I'd love to have the time to do all these things but Oh, uh, this is the one thing I have to stay away from. Yeah. Cuz you I need, get I would yeah. I would stop fishing. Keep asking for these green ones. Yeah. I like those. Yeah, they're, they're very interesting. I like, I like, like I said, I like the way Wayne thinks about things. He, he's done some others as well in the past that um, that aren't here, but uh, he's been he's been begged all the time by people who he's given lures to in the past. Please, please make me some more, make me some more. But he's never got the time. <laughs> no, yeah, because these are different. It's be interesting to see. Because uh, you wouldn't want to put the V in them because they'd be too similar to other things you could buy. Yeah, yeah. But it gives the option should you should you so wish on the day. Yeah, yeah. Which is nice. It's not often you get a customizable soft plastic, is it, without butchering them? When it's, it sort of gives you the, the, that that thing inbuilt. When we first came up with the idea of doing this podcast, yeah. this is what I wanted oh, from it. One hundred percent. I want I wanted guys to send us in free lures. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. What I wanted was independent lure builders, whether it be um, someone like Tom Moy with FFS lures, or someone like Wayne who does it literally yep. just for his own use. Yeah, this one's is it's a different one there. This is what it's all about. When I go to Sweden at Sport Fish Massen, mm-hmm. there's a big long alleyway dedicated to all the independent lure builders. Yeah. And it's kind of like the um the it's like you've got all the big 
concerns, and then you've got this long alley. And yeah. It's like where everyone who knows everybody is. Yeah. It's like the cult area. Yeah, yeah it yeah, is. Yeah. And it's you go down there, and you have to keep going up and down because you you recognise the same lure anglers a little while. Like a guy called Glenn Carlson. Um, I don't know him, know him, but if I mess, he'll know who I, we speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I kept going, and I kept buying the odd lure off him. And then so <laughs> the last time before COVID, I was there. He went, Andy. He goes, you take this. Yeah. I said, Glenn, I goes, I goes, no. He goes, because you don't use them. Because <laughs> I stick him on my mantle piece. Yeah. He says, you must use this one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he was actually adamant. He was a bit, I think he was a bit, not offended, but because he, he knew I loved the art. Yeah. But he actually said, no, this is not going to your That's mantle what, they're, piece. They're built to be fished. Yeah. yeah, you must use yeah. this one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, cause, and uh, this, is, this is what I like most about lure fishing. It's yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. And people actually... Yeah apply the human logic into something to catch in a fish because yep. uh, humans and fish don't think the same. No. Wayne, yeah. these are great. Cool, aren't they? Yeah, they are. So, uh, well, share these equally as in 75, 25. Yeah, because you've, you've already got some. <laughs> I was thinking the other way, but there you go. I don't do much vertical fishing. No. Because I just think the boat scares the fish. Yeah. But I'm going to... These... Oh, but, and these would be perfect for your bass fishing and things like that as well. Yeah. So... Yeah. Well, when we go back out with um, Robin... We'll take them. Well, can we put these in your bass? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the bigger ones. Yeah. Because they're about the right size, aren't they? Yeah. And then we can catch a 10-pound bass on a Wayne Fletcher shad. Yeah. That'd yeah. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, like I said, anyone who wants to do similar to this, send us some bits. Wayne's quite lucky. He lives around the corner to me, so he popped in and had a cup of tea the other day, and, and we swapped these. But um, if you do want to send them to us, there will be the details for the address in the description. Um, you know better than I do where that is. Sorry, mate. I was just thinking, I'm going to do a bit of B-roll and I need bass. <laughs> yeah, that's why I've held them to one side. Yeah. Um, oh, how funny. My yeah, I was yeah. on it. So the address to send everything to is the Rookery Water Tackle Shop, Tackle and Baits. It's always in the description. So just send all the stuff there. Yeah. Because one, I know there's somebody there. All the time. All the time. So yep. your precious lures will get delivered to the right spot. And uh, two, I think it's quite important that we stay very neutral in the podcast, yeah, yeah. that we're not yeah. sort of favouring uh, one shop over another. So it, this is a match fishing shop, so it's, it's the ideal place to send it, yeah. really. But this is great. So, um, yeah. Talking of being neutral, I've actually I've just remembered something from actually weeks ago that we don't think we ever actually mentioned. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, we discussed the UK lure fishing memes Instagram page quite a few times. And we both mentioned how we've... A little bit disappointed we'd never been on there. Yeah. I have actually been on there now. Like, yeah. on there, on there, as in not just not just a comment of mine mentioned. I <laughs> I, I think it was on the first or second podcast we ever did. Yeah. I was talking about how... Hook me up boxes. Yeah, yeah, so I was talking about how I don't like to be hard sold to and things like that. And the next <laughs> breath, I was shoving hook me up lures down everyone's throat. <laughs> now, I think, you know, it got me. You know, hands yeah. up, you got me, yeah. Do you still think you know who it is? I've got a bloody good idea, I think. I yeah. have no idea. But, um, it's, the, it's the sense of humour that I think... That I, I know who it is by their sense of humour, I think. But I'm, I I'm saw still one recently that tickled me. It was a finesse spro picture <laughs> from Germany. <laughs> With a huge great clip yeah, on the toe cables <laughs> for the trace, I saw that. <laughs> and there was another one, I can't remember what it was. It'll come to me in a minute. But yeah, it's yeah. whoever it is, I... I I like them. I love it. Yeah. I wish they'd do more. They're, they're too infrequent for my liking. I, yeah, I, go, I, think, I, I go to look every now and again, so oh, it hasn't been updated in a week. And yeah, but I think if you ever do it, it not becomes fun. Yeah, I know yeah. you know. It isn't so, like there's loads to, you know, there's not loads to go at. No, no, it's <laughs> good. Loads. It's good. Um, How are we doing on time? We are doing well. We've yeah. been go- we have bored people for another 50 minutes. Right. I'm going to do something very quickly, yeah. and then... I th- think unless you've got anything else we can pretty much wrap it up there i want to take us back a couple of a couple of minutes or however long ago it was to when we talk about technology and angling and i want to just round it off by saying me and you we're going to make a prediction here and now for us to refer back to in 10 years time oh god where do we think technology of fishing is going to be in 10 years where do we see the next advancement i think technology is going to be banned do you yes i do as in blanket banned or competition banned? I think it would be banned on lots of water. I think in the UK, if you're talking UK... Yeah, yeah, talk, so, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's our fish. If so we're talk talking relevance. UK, yeah. I think um, it will get to a point whereby 
there'd be too much stuff to put on boats. Boats will get damaged uh -huh. because I end up taking loads of pieces of wood, strap yeah. it. Just to, I'm very conscientious about yeah. damaging rental boats. Yeah. Uh, not saying people aren't, but I think there's other people that don't care. Yeah. And I think it will get to a point whereby um, to save all the hassle and the health and safety and the problems with fuel and batteries mm. and mm -hmm. blah, 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 I think there's a distinct possibility that we could see it banned on uh, rental Mm -hmm. Like we're big public waters. Day hire boats. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't think it, we, you can't ban it within fishing. No. But then again, what's its use? Abroad, I think it's too much of a money earner. Mm -hmm. So you look at the you look at the bass mm. competitions in oh, America. Yeah, yeah. I think they'll have, um, I think they'll have competitions whereby they have restrictions. Yeah. Well, it's already happened. So there's a few competitions that happen in the states now where. The two main rules that seem to pop up quite a lot is no panoptics and no A rigs. Yeah. So that that it, it, they're the two things at the moment that seem to be the hot topic in the states, and you have these competitions where you can enter and know that you're on a bit of a level playing field because no one's got a a live scope or you well, you see, an Alabama rig. What's to stop someone practicing with a exactly. live scope? Yeah. Because you don't need it on the day. No. Honestly, it's it's a it's a great bit of kit. Like well, I said about learning about all the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. You don't need it to be that precise on most situations. But do you do you think there's any room for progression there? Do you think that, that do you think it's hit its peak, or do you think it gets better? Well, I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I was, this, that's why I stopped you earlier because this is where my prediction. I think this well, is where it goes. Is is VR? What's it, what's it, is it VR, VR or VI? VR, virtual reality, or virtual intelligence. But I think it's augmented reality. Is what's going to be the thing. So what you, what in my prediction is, you'll have a set of goggles like this, probably not as bulky as this, where you'll be able to see through them. Because with these, if for anyone who's got these, you'll see there's little cameras in the front. So as you're looking through them, the little camera will come on, and you, all of a sudden you'll be able to see what's around you. But what it does, it overlays an image on reality, and I think that's what will happen. You'll get your transducer, which will read the water in front of you. You'll have done these, and you'll be able to watch the water in real time, but it will overlay what the transducer is reading. So yeah. you go, I can see that fish in 30 foot of water there. Yeah. I, I think that's where it's going. Yeah. I do. I think I, augmented I think right. re yeah. reality is where it's going. Yeah. I think the live scope will develop into this virtual, this, yeah. yeah. Augment is that augmented, it? augmented, I don't know what, what the real word is. It but makes sense. AR. It's called. Screens will be got rid of. Yep. Don't need a screen. Yep. Need not. High pace. Yep. Yeah. And more so, the more advancement in battery technology as well. Yeah, battery technology. Because that's thing, that's the thing. Because yeah. at the moment we're all very limited carrying around these huge batteries, or unless you want to spend a fortune on these lithium. But haven't lithium batteries advanced massively yeah, over the last yeah, few years? Yeah, hugely. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's that's for me. Everything's whether it's right or wrong is totally up to. You. Well, let us know. <laughs> is it yeah, right? Is yeah. it wrong? What's your opinion? Is is that the way it's going? Should it be going that way? Are you a traditionalist? Do you embrace the change? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I, I lie either way. I think I like a bit of both, personally. I like days without, days with. Um, yeah, I'm the same. But it's as lure, lure fishing, yep. artificial, using artificials, yep. you need to be able to know what it's doing. It's doing. Yep. And water densities, yeah. water temperatures, yeah. wind, because yeah. you get toes. There's, I think I said a couple of podcasts ago, people go to catch... They should go to learn, yep. because then they'll constantly catch more in the yeah, long yeah, run. Yeah, yeah. And it's not it, there is so much to learn. It's, it's a, I think it's a fantastic sport because it's never ending. Have you ever used or this is a bit of technology we haven't touched upon yet? You say wolf cam, a camera of some yeah. description. I've got one. I've got an underwater camera on a forty meter cable. I've used it once. I just can't be asked to drag it out of me all the time. Yeah, but I, no. I can I, I can see a real benefit to that because that is like live scope times 10 because you're literally watching obviously the scope of what you can see is, is lesser um, but you can actually see things in real time happening I'll tell you what I did which was really interesting it's got nothing to do with learns but yep. I stuck a GoPro off my decking yep. in the summer yep. in the river and I fed like yeah, yeah. Bread, uh, mashed bread Yeah, and you should see it, watching the fish reactions over a period of different mm -hmm. times of the mm -hmm. day and whatever and when narrow boats came past yeah, it, it amazed me what the water did. Right, and how you think it would get coloured? It actually got clearer. Right, because it's drawing water. It, yeah, it, it was drawing. Yeah, it yeah. Was, it was very strange what was happening, and, and so yeah, like I said, there's so much to learn. Uh huh. And you just you can you just go. I mean, that's nothing to do with what we're talking about, but 
It is in a way. Well, it is. It's technology. Yeah. You've used the technology to view, yeah. to, have, to have a view into the world of fishing which you wouldn't have had before. And there were some really big rud yeah. off my decking. Yeah. But they all sat right under the small fish. Right. Use them as cover. I don't know. Yeah. But I presume so. Yeah. They were hundreds of really small uh, little rud fry, bream, whatever. All about an ounce to three ounces. Yeah. And you just see these big uh, pound and a half rud were just sat right underneath them. Right. It was incredible. It was just what they were doing. You're just thinking, wow, I didn't even... And it's only when yeah. the camera moved by accident. I remember as I was lifting it out, I got a different angle. Yeah, yeah. And I caught a glimpse of these bigger fish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah, so I think that's why, if we go back to being a kid, mm. I used to get excited every single time I knew I was going fishing, let yeah. alone going. Yeah. And I think as you become an adult, if you're not careful, you end up going for the result. Not, mm. not what you did as going as a kid. Yeah. As you were a kid going, you didn't care what you called. No, no. It was the fact that you were there. Going, yeah. And I think you have to go back into that childhood to get the most out of your fishing. But you can use so many things to help you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right, I think that's a good place to leave it. I love these. These are good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks to everyone else who's been involved. Well done to the guys that won. Uh, if anyone wants to get involved, leave some comments, send us some messages, send us some bits and pieces. That's what I was going to say. The likes and the comments are vital. Oh, because, yeah, again, yeah. I think we mentioned it last episode, we get picked up by the algorithm, thrown out there, and more people will find the podcast. And yeah. if we can grow, then it encourages more people to get involved. Yeah. And the whole thing's like a, an ecosystem. That's it. Right. Thanks, episode 10. Done. Done. Thanks, guys. See you next time.